Hey everyone, it's Vincent from Upright Health, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about one critical shoulder movement that people tend to overlook when trying to strengthen and or rehab their shoulders. In fact, I often don't let clients do much else with their shoulders until they've at least mastered this one critical movement. So I'm gonna show you exactly what it is as well as some exercises to reinforce it so that you too can get started on improving your shoulder performance. So without further ado, the movement in question is shoulder protraction. What does it look like? Check out my shoulder blades. I'm doing a wall plank and I'm going to cue myself to reach through the wall. Watch what happens. My shoulder blades separate and more importantly, they get flush to my rib cage. Protraction. That is the movement that we are concerned with today. So I just showed you one exercise that you can use to strengthen your shoulder protraction. That was a wall plank. You can also do the wall plank on your elbows. So here you can think about driving your elbows through the wall, all right? Keeping your abs tight, keeping your upper back from doing any funky things, right? Just keep your abs tight, keep your upper back straight and drive your elbows through the wall so that your shoulder blades separate and glide forward on the rib cage. Another exercise that you can use is a sphinx. So here gravity is going to try to sink your body through your shoulder blades. So you gotta protract to not let that happen. Again, notice how my shoulder blades are separating they're gliding forward on my rib cage as my spine remains in a nice straight position. So again, drive the elbows through the ground. Bam. My shoulder blades glide forward and most importantly, they get flush on my rib cage. And yet another exercise you can do to strengthen shoulder protraction is the trusty old dumbbell row, but you're going to make sure that your stance arm stays protracted, meaning you're not allowed to slump down like this. All right. You're not allowed to slump that stance arm like this because that is not an, a stable shoulder. You got to protract, right? make sure the shoulder blade glides forward on the rib cage so everything here is stable as you row. For all these exercises, I like three to five sets of eight to 12 reps, right? Really be mindful of your movement here. It's, it's not about the exercise itself. You can see the common theme here is I'm just making sure that anytime I'm supporting my body weight with my arms, I am protracting. So this applies to the push-up as well. It applies to the mountain climbers. It applies to anything where you are reaching away, right? If you let yourself sink down, well, you've just destabilized your shoulder and that is why you would not be able to further strengthen or rehab your shoulders. So that's why I'm so insistent that people learn how to protract their shoulders before they do anything more advanced. So that being said, there are some common misconceptions around shoulder protraction. Let's start with some things that it's mistaken for. Take a look at your common desk jockey posture, the one that we always get into over time because, because gravity, right? People think that this is shoulder protraction, so they reason that we should not train shoulder protraction anymore. The thing is, this is not shoulder protraction. The main scapular movement, the main shoulder blade movement that's going on in an awful desk posture like this is number one, scapular anterior tilt. What is anterior tilt? Scapular anterior tilt is when the bottom edge of your scapula comes off, right? So the scapula and the entire scapula tips forward like this as seen from the side view. We need the shoulder blade to get flush on the rib cage and the scapular anterior tilt opposes that, but it's not shoulder protraction. Second uh, scapular movement that gets confused with shoulder protraction is scapular internal rotation. As seen from the back, imagine as if my palm is my right shoulder blade. Internal rotation of the scapula is when the, the inner edge of it 
comes off like so. Also creating instability, right? So desk posture, scapular internal rotation, and anterior tilt. Neither of those are protraction. Again, protraction is simply your shoulder blade gliding across your rib cage. And in doing so, it must get flush on the rib cage, building stability, building stability that is essential for further strengthening and rehabbing of the shoulders. Now, another misconception about shoulder protraction is that we should not train it because we need to train tons of retraction instead, and retraction is the opposite of protraction. Now, this is misguided. This is misguided because scapular retraction, right, squeezing your shoulder blades together, should not be relied on to get an extended thoracic spine, a, a nice straight upper back. Because the spine and the scapula, they're two separate bones, so they need to move independently of each other. Yes, I will agree. If you need tons of retraction exercises in the beginning to stabilize the thoracic spine, then sure, sure, do a ton of those because you do need a stable and extended thoracic spine in order to stabilize your scapula on top of it, right? But once you have stabilized and extended thoracic spine, once you can achieve this, then the next thing to do is to stabilize the scapula on top of it. And the best movement for that is protraction. All right, and that's the video, guys. I hope that it helps you understand why shoulder protraction is so essential in strengthening and rehabbing your shoulder complex. Are you confused about anything? Did you find some of this enlightening? Do you have any input? Leave a comment below. Click the like button, check the description box for more helpful links, and subscribe. And as always, remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.